This video is going to show us how to take apart and reassemble an Anver M150 or M250 vacuum generator that was built prior to 2004. Uh, in the video we'll completely disassemble the generator and replace the diaphragm and put everything back together. Uh, the first step in that is removing the bolts from the top of the housing. So there are two sets of bolts, one on the outer rim of the uh, generator which you've already taken apart and on the inner circle um, there's another set. Um, when you're taking apart the middle set, when you take out the last bolt, you should hear a part drop inside the generator, which is okay. There's a plastic uh, holder on the diaphragm that's going to fall to the bottom of the housing as we do that. So. Once the bolts are taken out, we're going to take out the suspension pulley assembly so that we can lift up the top of the housing. Um, so there are basically three bolts to take off here. We've already loosened these up before the video started. There's two on the top, the one on the bottom. And then the side plates will pull out so you can remove the assembly. Once that's uh, completed then we will hook up the uh, uh, hoist to the top link here so we can remove the top cover of the generator. So once we've got the top housing off, we uh, just put a lifting eye through the uh, piston here so we can lift out the uh, mechanical valve assembly and the diaphragm. So as we do that, uh, we'll just lift up and then make sure you release any vacuum from the diaphragm just by pulling off the side guides here. Set that aside. So once we have the piston assembly removed from the diaphragm, um, we'll look inside the uh, housing just to look for any dirt or debris, um, rust or anything that should not be inside the uh, generator. In this case, the generator is fairly clean on the inside, um, but if there wasn't anything in there, just uh, remove it with uh, compressed air or shop rag. Um, if there is rust or debris, you can uh, sand it down or wire brush it just to get it smooth and, and clean again. Um, so in this case we're okay there. Um, the other step would be to take a look at the diaphragm and look and see if you have notice any cracks or tears, um, any damage to it. Um, if you find anything, any tears or cracks, just have it replaced um, so you can get a new one put in there and make sure there's no vacuum leaks. Once we've got the generator housing cleaned up, um, we can continue taking apart the generator to get the diaphragm replaced. Um, so we just have to pull down the generator, or sorry, the diaphragm, and then there'll be a set of uh, bolts to take out. Uh, we've already removed several uh, before the video, but um, we'll just take those out and then the diaphragm will be completely loose. So once the bolts are out, uh, you can take off the diaphragm uh, holding ring off and then the diaphragm itself will just uh, peel up and out off of the pieces here. So once that's out, then you can take a look at the diaphragm, just go around all the sides and edges, look for any rips or tears that we mentioned earlier. Um, if you don't see any issues, then um, you can put it back into use. Um, while you have it apart, you should lubricate the diaphragm with baby powder or talcum powder 
Uh, make sure you get it on all the sides, inside and out, and all the lips and creases as well. And uh, then you'll be good to put it back together. Okay, now we'll just double check that the mechanical valve assembly is working properly. Um, so we just have to remove the uh, one part here, and then you want to tilt the part up and just put your finger underneath it. Basically, as you push up, you should feel the valve assembly either come all the way down to the bottom, and then the next step it'll sit up uh, maybe half an inch from the bottom housing. And just do that through a few cycles. If it moves freely, everything is working fine. Okay, so now that we've got the generator completely apart, we're going to start putting the uh, lifter back together. And uh, it's important to note that the order of operations for reassembling the unit is different from the disassembly. So the first step is to put the diaphragm over top of the diaphragm guide and just line up the bolt holes on the diaphragm. And then you put the top cover on top of the guide and put the bolts together. So once the top cover is back in place, you're going to start putting the bolts on the inner circle back together. Uh, so we'll do an alternating patter from side to side and uh, start by putting them in finger tight and then after that's done, um, just adjust them so that they are snug but not over tight so you're not uh, causing any damage to the diaphragm. Uh, so now that all the bolts are in tight and in place in the inner ring, we'll uh, lift up the sub-assembly here and we're going to put the clamping ring onto the diaphragm. Uh, it's important to note that you put it in the right way. Um, one part is recessed to allow the bolt heads to uh, be flush with the top of the ring. So we'll lift up the assembly here. And we just have to fold the diaphragm down so that the ring can go inside. and then pull the diaphragm back up to the top. So now what you have to do is put the, line up the uh, holes in the clamping ring with the diaphragm and put the hole, the uh, bolts in, in through the diaphragm and the clamping ring. And then once that's done, you set this assembly on top of the piston rod assembly and then uh, bolt together the two parts. So. Um, it can be a little tricky, um, so it's just a matter of going slow with the hoist and setting down um, the diaphragm gently on top of the ring so you can get the bolt holes lined up and started. So we'll go ahead and do that. So we have all the bolts in the uh, diaphragm uh, clamping ring. Uh, we're just going to position the top cover over top of the lower and we'll lower it down slowly and line up the bolts with the holes down here. So again, it takes a bit of uh, finesse to get it in the right spot, but just go slowly and uh, start a few at a time and we will get, get our way around. So again, just continuing the process, I've got a couple bolts tightened in my hand, so now I can just pull the diaphragm down so I can better see the bolts and just continue to tighten them up, making sure everything's lined up. And once I've got the bolts in fairly hand tight, then I can uh, lower down the top half of the assembly a bit more just to make sure that the clamping ring is on tight to the lower half of the uh, diaphragm covers. Okay, so now that we've got all the uh, bolts tightened down on the hold down ring, we'll just flip up the diaphragm and then we're gonna lift the uh, this sub-assembly over top of the uh, housing and then just set it down in place. So as we're setting it down over top of the housing, we just need to make sure that the lip of the diaphragm sits on the lip and the housing and that it stays tight. Um, sometimes as you're pushing it down, the, the lip on the diaphragm will want to slip out of the, uh, the position here. So it's just critical to make sure it's in the right spot so that there's no gaps or uh, way to have a vacuum leak as, as you uh, tighten down the bolts. So we'll go ahead and do that. Uh, 
Okay, so now I've got uh, the diaphragm in place on the lips. So I'm just going to finish setting down the uh, top portion here and line up the bolt holes. Um, one tip if you find that the diaphragm doesn't want to stay within the uh, grooves here, you can use a piece of scotch tape and just tape the upper lip of the diaphragm um, onto the actual housing itself to help keep that lip in place. So, um, and you can keep the tape on there after everything's set down in place if, if you need to. So there's a little tip if, uh, if you're having some issues. Now that the rings are on tight, um, we're just going to lower the chain assembly and put the uh, guide rollers back into place. And uh, from there, the reassembly is uh, complete for the lifter. So, just lower that down. So, just have to push the diaphragm out of the way. Okay, so now that we've got uh, the lifter completely reassembled, um, uh, we'll have to do a load test just to make sure that we are getting vacuum in the generator, that there are no leaks and that everything is working properly. Uh, this particular unit needs a few more repairs, so we won't be testing it right now, but uh, again, make sure you do load test your lifter after repairing it to make sure everything's working properly.